my first soiree with the Far Cry series was with Instinct, which actually came out just before Far Cry 3, and it came out over on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. But true Far Cry fans will know of its previous installation, Far Cry 2, and of course 1, which absolutely rocked the PC world. You had like 50 kilometers of open world space. It was a real open world dream, fire effects. You needed a decent PC to run these games, and I looked on the sidelines in Envy, but finally got to look at quite an early edition of Instinct over on console. Then we got Far Cry 3, which kind of changed the Far Cry direction permanently from there on in and a little bit the industry because of a brilliant mapped actor being in it playing the role of Vass and Vass was very well written totally evil a really off the hook villain and I think the people at Ubisoft realized that you can have a first person shooter but it will sell triple if you take the time to write in a decent character that is crazy I like this phone this is a nice fucking phone I am Couch Coop, by the way, and we are going to be looking at three Far Cry games. So starting with three, then we're going to look at four, and we're going to finally finish with five. What you're looking at here is the PlayStation 4 version, which is called the Classic Edition. And I brought this in 2018, that infamous busy year. And as mentioned in my community post, it's been five years since I've spoken about these games, and Far Cry 5 has now come up to five years old. There was a New Dawn game straight after five, which I haven't played, and Far Cry 6 has had nothing but bad reviews all around it so I very much doubt there's any urgency for me to purchase that one. These are the best modern Far Cry's and we're going to talk a little bit about why and I feel bad for not putting Primal on this list that is also well worth a look but just pipped it I didn't want the whole thing to be an hour long. This version doesn't support any noticeable PlayStation 5 improvements there are slight ones on the PlayStation 4 Pro but this is really a bog standard PlayStation Pro edition running on my phone, but no harm, no foul. I wasn't expecting a 2018 game to be patched in that direction anyway. I want to cover openings in the three games, and Far Cry 3 obviously sports one of the strongest, pitching you as like an extreme holiday maker with like a bunch of young people going out clubbing, having a great time, and then falling out with the local island militia slash drug dealing slash arms dealer gang. And it's awesome to see the transformation in character and the stress and troubles you go through in front of an early game. And then we're going home. The villain introduction sequence is kind of identical in all three of these games, giving them a huge chunk right at the front to get you going, see how crazy they are. There'll normally be some sort of outlandish act that they'll do that sets you up to really hate that individual. With Vass, it is all dialed up to 11. The guy does not have a conscience and he's so unpredictable. I think that's the attraction. The schizo angle of his character just keeps you guessing and wanting to find out what crazy ass stuff is going to put in your direction in the next section of the game and also the dramatic scenes and the drawbridge everything coming together as you escape in that opening couple of hours it really was a memorable event way back in 2013 on the xbox 360 seeing this it was like wow this plays like an actual film it is totally epic and of course having actors and good writing everywhere i was like this is the new age <laughs> Also a super important scene just then. Your character is not a killer. The brother was, but you aren't. And you really are repulsed by all of the death and the killing, but you do this metamorphosis. You go through this change. You see it in stuff like 28 Days Later, the original, or even that remake of The Hills Have Eyes. The protagonist going pure badass. And that's the best way for a protagonist to go, if you ask me. You have the right to take my life. But no. I will also take yours. When this was released on the Xbox 360, it was very early internet age, and IGN would show screenshots that show clips, and it was just such an instantly recognizable palette with those plants, the trees, the ocean. You were like, oh my god, they've got some Far Cry 3 footage. Everyone was immediately drawn to it, me included, and it very much delivered. That engine was pretty ahead of its time for an open world shooter. The 
the freedom of it all and those advanced physics, amazing weaponry and vas on your tail, it felt like nothing you've ever played before and it really set a mould I think for Ubisoft and the series going forward and the lightning in the bottle situation that happened with Far Cry 3 is due to a number of different things I think but it mainly hangs off vas, so much so that they brought him back for some DLC for 5 and even 6 I think. This vehicle driving and sort of change of game model wasn't too new for us but it did feel incredibly smooth back then and it still does now. This game doesn't suffer from any screen tearing or any frame drops whatsoever. I don't think it's running at 1080. It might be super sampling in areas. 2018 was a kind of a backward year when it comes to remakes or remasters getting put onto the PlayStation 4. It could have done a hell of a lot of better job with this because it literally is just laid on as a standard port. Maybe it could be revisited with ray tracing. Get Will Smith's wife in to play Vass. It's quite clear that there's a team within Ubisoft that right on the Far Cry side that A have a great sense of humour, B a brilliant self-awareness and C a penchant for the dramatic and know how to write psychos. That team I think has dissipated a bit because there's essence of it in 4, see some rudimentary angles in 5 but 3 I think is where they were all aligned, it all just came together. I include the NPCs in that statement as well. We got some lunar light and underwater footage. I was very surprised at how much is actually under the water surface in this game. I don't really remember doing that much exploration or the killer jellyfish. But the first thing I do remember were the sharks, how good they looked, how vicious they were and how much of a cool thing it was <laughs> trying to avoid them on the boats. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the only other game I know that sports sharks this well. I'm not including Man Eater in that statement. I want to talk about why the game had such an impact on me. Obviously the vast thing is huge but also its story wrapped around this sort of rescue mission of all your friends that you went traveling with. It's like nightmare fuel. It's not an inconceivable scenario either and you have to learn some majorly cool tricks to get them all back and then creeping up the ladder to get to Vass and the top bosses. It feels like a perfect story arc. Jesus look at these graphics. 2018 get on the remake Ubisoft. The game does feel its age a little bit with the combat. It's quite sticky compared to the other two versions we've got coming out. That was a double kill with that shotgun, by the way. But it's the perk system I need to touch on. They adjust it quite a lot. With this, it's kind of three linear columns and you're not locked out of too much stuff if you choose a direction to go in. That has changed a little bit with the series. I do like all three perk systems in all three games, but rumor has it they've scrubbed it for six. I was out hunting this morning, got lucky. I found a small sounder of pigs. Thought I'd share. All right, let's step up a console generation and look at Far Cry 4 on the PlayStation 4, released for that particular system, and we loved it. I grabbed this with both hands, coming off the back of Far Cry 3, seeing the villain and these like pink outfit, his weird hair, set in a fictional Himalayan village. You're returning, going through your father's footsteps. He had this reputation. You join the sort of guerrilla team of the rebels. It's pretty amazing, and I do think it's one of the closest to Far Cry 3 on a villain and story level. It also runs like a complete dream on the PlayStation 5. We're not getting 4K visuals, it's a bit grainy, but that's with the territory. These fish, demon fish they're called, they are one of the most scariest things about the whole game. They're looking around, they want something to chew into, but there's nothing there at the moment. I think time to put a bit of uh, flesh in there for them.
His beauty needs to be spoken about with the temples, the shrines, the amalgamation of different religions and just the visual spectacle of seeing Everest constantly in the background is absolutely amazing. Not only did the game ramp the graphics up, but it also ramped up the vehicles and flying and sort of interacting with a lot of things within engine. It's the first one to feature some decent in-car combat. I'm I was such a huge fan of Far Cry 3, so getting this on day one was such an easy thing to do, and I was very surprised at how good the explosions looked, some of the depth of field on the smoke and inclusion. It was really an improv. This is the worst achievement I've ever got in my life. It was two blokes, wasn't it? But that brings me on to my karma point and how the game is constantly asking you to take control of situations or small tasks or little events within the map itself it also ramps up the wildlife violence <laughs> to like 12 you're constantly getting attacked or mauled by a tiger and you're also dealing with a lot more ordnance so mines proximity mines grenades that sort of beautiful stuff Let's talk about Pagan Min, because he's quite a complex villain and not as vicious as Vass or as primal even. He's more sophisticated, he's actually in position of power and privilege by running this country, he's on the money, but he's got this underlying, almost schizophrenic angle that will pop out at the worst possible times. That it got out of control? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, what'd you say? It got out of control. Got out of control. I hate when things get out of control. That sort of behavior, that sort of canon, that aristocracy and elite with that, you know, almost Bruce Wayne-like double life is kind of quite trope. It's quite easy thing. You see it all the time in Bond films, particularly the older ones. The villains have normally got money or a third nipple. With this, I thought it's treaded in those footsteps a little bit too much, but it is still really cool to have him constantly on you. He will be talking on your CB. He kind of knew who your father was, the relationship with the mother there's quite a cool story embedded in here that's attached to the villain in particular you and i are gonna tear shit up i want to get back to the animal thing very quickly because far cry 4 clearly ups the ante on how dangerous the indigenous life is the elephants are like flesh tanks and the rhinos unbelievable the npc enemies they're more terrified of those giant turkeys than they are of yourself wielding an AK-47. This guy just runs past me in a complete panic. <laughs> now whilst we're on the subject of panic and we did touch on it with Far Cry 2 and that's the game's fire or fire engine. It's so flammable. This whole game is like a tinderbox. One Molotov will set an acre of grass on fire and it will loop right the way around you. You have to just always remember it goes into the trees, it hangs around for ages. I do and don't like it. They dialed it down a little bit for the next game which we'll look at. But yeah, <laughs> fire's your worst enemy by a long shot. I did want to cover the boat traversal very quickly. Now, this might be my memory failing on me, but I don't remember an all-terrain hovercraft, certainly not one that was available early game. So that was an awesome discovery. It's really fast, it goes on land, and it just allows you to get everywhere. This map is very big. I don't know where it ranks in Far Cry maps, but it certainly doesn't appear to be anything small, and you're constantly needing to fly or take the river to get to areas faster. I do love the flyer, I love its ricketiness and how dangerous that thing would actually be in real life and dismounting it as well, just watching it do the weirdest stuff. Talking of weird things, I don't know if it's the same guy that does the sort of American hit character that normally pops up somewhere in all of these games, but he's so good and this character is so funny, oblivious to everything around him, doesn't even understand the natives, even though they speak perfect English, it's good comedy writing and they always get me in the gut with introducing a totally hilarious NPC right in a crisis situation, it's sort of 
adds that bit of seasoning to the whole story that makes you think, yeah, Far Cry games used to be really good. Boom! I went French fries, you stayed potato. That's all right. You kind of came in on the slow bus too, but you got there, so I got respect for that. I'm gonna see you around though, okay? Okay, let's roll, Golden Path, homie! Woo! What does it feel like to be playing this game alongside stuff like Atomic Heart? If you know the channel, we've just done Rage 2, and we've also had the Wolfenstein 2 running at ultra 60 frames per second. I mean, you need to go to the opticians after playing that game. It feels okay. It's because of these visuals and the setting. Now, there's one thing I need to warn you all of. There's only one save slot in this game, and I had to get to the Shangri-La to show you all how amazing these sub-boss battles are and this beautiful tailored arenas but it wiped my save so I could get the intro of Bloody Pagan Win, where the fuck is called. Fuck! Ah. We'll finish with Far Cry 4 with me playing tag around a tent with a tiger. What was all that? What was that you just put us through? All those pans at self-indulgence and singing and that. Is this... This is this is you flexing. Yeah, you've, you've, you've downloaded the texture pack. You're running it ultra right. 60 freight. Yeah, okay. All right, Coop. Just do your thing so we can get on with this, please. Holy shit. Oh my God. This did not look like this on a PlayStation 4. This makes those graphics look like a coloring book. Unbelievably good. Water physics, resolution, lighting, everything. I was very much, but I was squealing when I was seeing this footage. Unreal stuff. Again, because of the age, I can run this on my PC at top settings. There's a few things to look out for. One of which is the start of Rhineland is shrouded in fog, which looks terrible. I was like, whoa, I don't remember this. And you know, where is my distance detail? But it lifts and it's really refreshing when it does. You start seeing those blue skies, the contrast with the yellow fields. It's a stunning looking game is Far Cry 5. Still killing a lot of civilians by accident though and none of it is intentional. Let's look at the fire very quickly. You can tell it's not as infectious as it has been on previous games. It's still damn dangerous. My god does it look a lot better. And these settings, the way the grass is waving and every goddamn apple is visible in the trees. Everything is affected by this texture pack. It's absolutely beautiful and I really didn't think I'd get 60 frames per second. This is probably the first time I've played a Far Cry game that genuinely runs at 60 frames per second. I do also remember some screen tear on the PlayStation 4 Pro even and I did actually put the V-Sync on full stop. There's a variable option but I just wanted to not see a single bit of the old jam sandwich. I've gotten the chance to look at Far Cry 5 again through a new set of optics. There's been a lot of water under the bridge politically in America and in Europe and this whole idea of a militant cult is something that is taken probably a bit more seriously nowadays. I think the introduction to Joseph Seed which we'll get to is pretty damn well done and it does actually pip Far Cry 4 for having a pretty dark and moody and scary main villain plus a whole bunch of others that are relations and the maps even laid out to relate that which is pretty cool i thought we were done with the pervin we are never done with the pervin far cry 5 takes its vehicles to a whole nother level this texture pack allows me to see this game in a completely new light pun intended 
everything is kicked out of the park. It's such a beautiful thing to look at that I barely have got anything done. It's been extremely difficult to get through a square meter of map. Let's talk about the planes really quickly. This is what I call a Thelma and Louise takeoff. There's a drop here which should crash any plane, but we make it. It's not flight simulator. You need just about 25 meters to get into the air but it's fun runs well and you get vehicles with airborne weaponry and you have dog fights up in the air that's pretty damn amazing what isn't amazing is my landing techniques though i get a little bit of stage fright i always jump out too early it does take the airborne side quite seriously and the companion side this game is all about unlocking cool people to follow you around a little bit like a skyrim game and they'll get involved in all of the combat they all have their own little tropes the dog's kind of a cool starter but you get some very colorful and funny characters to work with and you get to switch them out whenever you want which is pretty awesome this footage shows me stopping to repair on a river and under fire and get it all done it was still all within mission i mean that is some indiana Jones shit right there. Hey, deputy, if you need another plane, yeah, come back to our airfield. We got a bunch in the hangar. So I'm about to show you a clip of some combat and after this happened I was really knocked back that this wasn't a cutscene or a scripted event and it really points perfectly at the chaos that this game can create. I think that's why I'm going to go through this whole game again is because it feels so different and looks so right. The NPC behavior is a bit sketchy at times. They haven't improved that much. The stuff that unfolds again after one Molotov still brings a smile to the face. That guy coming down the stairs, I mean, I'm so excited by this, I fall off a ledge. At one point, the dog gets caught on fire, everyone's on fire, I'm on fire. <laughs> Using some of the cool new vehicles and embedding those into the mission structures and going up and down the different counties and dealing with those NPC bosses is a really cool idea. You sort of rank up certain areas, you get sick of a particular storyline, you just go off and do something else. For me, I think that's what good open world games are all about. Giving you that choice in case you get sick of a particular play style or game model, you can just switch it out. Now, Far Cry has always been a seller in the industry because it embeds all of its cool vehicles, indigenous life and NPC enemy characters into the missions. It feels very natural walking around the landscape and getting involved in various events and instances. It also pushes just the right amount of stealth to you, keeping that alarm system set up. On Far Cry 3, there's a mission in the campaign that's got compulsory stealth in it, it's in a shipyard, and it's just fail if you get clocked every time. It's very difficult, and it feels forced. With this, I like the idea of good intentions at the start to try and get through and thin everybody out, and then it all goes pear-shaped, but you don't have that many to deal with, it's a great feeling getting your silenced pistol going and operating at night and having your escape vehicles to hand. The wildlife isn't going to blow you off your chair like the stuff in Far Cry 4. You've not got giant rhinos and huge elephants to deal with, but what there is there is pretty well populated. They do a good job of hiding stuff. <laughs> There's no demon fish in it, unfortunately, but there are some really cool airborne attacks from the enemies. And I love being able to get up there, chase them down, use your bombs. You actually have a air to ground bomb carriage in one of the planes, but it's the machine gun in, all that strafing and piloting that we really didn't get the chance to enjoy at this magnitude with the previous Far Cry games. Let's talk about Joseph Seed very quickly, the primary antagonist in the game. And yes, very complex cult leader, extremely Old Testament. And I think that's where some of the more scary villains and characters in media can be found is where religion starts telling them what to do. That's the door to massive madness. 
his other family members sort of acting as mini bosses, the sister and how sinister she is with the drugs and hallucinogens. It does point in the Far Cry 3 direction sometimes with quite mad trippy cutscenes taking you right down the rabbit hole. But it's just stuff like this that the other two games cannot compete with and that's not too fair because of their age and because of the engines they're made on but I really am going to keep going with Far Cry 5 for a bit longer. I'm also genuinely attached to some of the NPCs and their stories and helping those guys out on the farms and their mini quests. It's really cool. It's kind of up there with four with good friendly NPC characters. Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm better in the air, but you are a fucking beast on the ground. I'll hit him high, you hit him low. What do you say, partner? Hoorah! So what are my conclusions on these three games? Well, they're all worth replaying, especially Far Cry 5 on these specs, but also that PlayStation 4 version of Far Cry 3. And if you've got access to 4, run it on the 5 and you'll be extremely impressed. I have been Couch Coup, and I will see you all down there. Shut the fuck up.